Electricity. It's so much a part of our lives. It's easy to take for granted. It warms our homes and lights the night. It gives us music, cooks our food, and lets us communicate with each other over vast distances. Martha, dear, how are you? We depend so much on electricity that it's become essential to our way of life. It's hard to believe not so very long ago, much of this country was without electricity. And things were quite a bit different in those days. In our own area, many towns had electricity as early as the turn of the century. But it would take another 40 years to bring the power of electricity to the rural areas of Lane County. Electrifying rural Lane County was the goal of a lot of local citizens, ordinary people, who banded together for the common good and established what is known as Lane Electric Cooperative. The cooperative which to this day is still owned by those it serves. Lane Electric has its roots in the days following the First World War. While overseas, the Doughboys had been amazed to see that almost every European home, both urban and rural, enjoyed the convenience of electricity. This was very curious to many rural Americans. While most U.S. cities had power, only 5% of its rural areas were electrified. Urban utilities refused to provide power to the outlining areas because there just wasn't any profit there. While most of the Western world enjoyed the modern conveniences of electrical power, rural America was still living by firelight. Then came the Roaring Twenties, ushering in a new era across America. It was a time of unprecedented prosperity and technical achievement where everyone became touched by the magic of electrical power. That is, everyone but those in the countryside. Rural Americans still heated their water over a wood stove and became increasingly impatient with the utility companies which failed to serve their needs. When the bottom dropped out of Wall Street in 1929, it seemed their dream for an electrified rural America would be lost forever in the shadow of the Great Depression. But the people of rural America refused to accept this. The farmer especially, whose produce sustained the country during the long, bleak Depression years, began finding powerful voices in Washington. Realizing that agricultural production would increase with modern electric technology, Congress was finally brought to see the light. In 1936, the Rural Electrification Administration, the REA, was formed. Its stated goal was to electrify America. Yet, even with the REA's nearly interest-free loans, private utilities were still reluctant to take the chance of expanding into the less profitable rural areas. As a result, the REA began promoting the formation of local cooperatives, people working together to help themselves. In the late 1930s, a group of Lane County residents began to work on what would soon become Lane Electric Cooperative. A longtime member of the co-op, Fritz Petzold, remembers what those early days were like. People are enthusiastic, see? Oh, we're going to get power now. That's for sure. And boy, everybody worked. When 8 o'clock come, every man was on a job with his tools. And they worked, too. They didn't, they didn't fiddle around any. Burn the brush and clear the strip through. But the first hole was dug by hand, mind you. Maybe you think that wasn't a job. It didn't have no park. It didn't know. They didn't know. It didn't have no machines to drill a hole in the ground. See, that's the way the thing got started. And they can move pretty fast. That's where our line got built. By 1941, the lights were finally coming on all over rural Lane County. Since those early days, the REA system has grown to include over a thousand co-ops across the country. Lane Electric serves over 2,300 square miles of Lane County, from the High Cascades to Willamette Valley farmlands. The co-op serves much of the back country of Lane County, where residents are often miles apart.
Nearer to town, member density increases. In many places, suburban growth has moved into the co-op service area. This rapid urban expansion has put increased pressure on Lane Electric to update and expand its distribution system. Although demands on the co-op have grown dramatically, its basic premise has never changed. Lane Electric is still based on the spirit of people joining together to help one another. And it is this cooperative effort that makes Lane Electric so much different from private utilities. In short, the co-op puts people ahead of profits. When new customers join the Lane Electric system, they automatically become members of the cooperative. Since Lane Electric is a non-profit consumer-owned organization, each member has a say in how the system will function. To represent their viewpoints, members vote for a board of directors to conduct co-op policy. The membership has an opportunity to elect board members and voice opinions each spring at the co-op's annual meeting. The board hires a general manager. It is the manager's job to direct the co-op's day-to-day operations. Truck 15 to truck 1. <laughs> This is truck one, go ahead, 15. Yeah, Dallas, we just had a call from a consumer who reports a tree on our line on Fox Hollow Road about a mile east of Macbeth. Uh, you're in that area. Could you give us a check on that? Yeah, I'm already up here with the crew, and we do have a tree on the wire. We're going to have it another 15, 20 minutes to have it ready to energize. Though the co-op has its roots in the country, Lane Electric is very much a modern, well-run business organization. The co-op employs a wide range of competent professionals, and that's important because the ever-changing electric utility field is growing increasingly complex. Fox Hollow, we have everything in the clear now. We're going to re-energize the line. Co-op members can be proud of the dedicated hard work and professional training that Lane Electric employees bring to their jobs. Their dedication and knowledge has resulted in better service and lower rates to co-op members throughout the system. In fact, the co-op's electrical rates have always remained among the lowest in the nation. With this working attitude, the people at Lane Electric have been able to meet the area's rapidly growing electricity demands. Service demands are expected to continue to grow rapidly. As a result, co-op facilities are constantly being updated to provide electrical service at the very highest level possible. At present, Lane Electric is strictly an electrical distribution utility without power generating facilities. And like many Northwest utilities, the co-op purchases power wholesale from Bonneville Power. The BPA is an agency of the U.S. Department of Energy and obtains most of its power from hydroelectric plants on the Columbia River. BPA sells this low-cost hydroelectric power to the co-op at rates far below any other source. But as demands grow, the BPA's supply of power is becoming stretched too far. And the day will come when this low-cost source of energy will not be enough to meet the needs of Lane Electric's customers. In preparation for that day, Lane Electric is working closely with other regional power utilities to explore acceptable alternative energy sources. At Lane Electric, finding the best alternative power source is recognized as the challenge of the future. Even though Lane Electric operates in a world where dollars are measured in millions and planning is based years in the future, the utility's consumer-owned structure has managed successfully to keep its close ties to the people it serves. The co-op is also able to serve its members in other ways. Educational programs are held on a number of subjects, including energy conservation. Co-op experts are available to give advice and help members conserve energy in their homes and businesses. Usually, the results mean a very real savings in both energy and money for the consumer. At Lane Electric, we've been working since 1939 to provide our members with the best service at the lowest possible price. This same task is our goal for the years ahead. We can be proud of the co-op's heritage. 
Lane Electric today reflects the dreams of its early pioneers. But it's important to remember the cooperative spirit is as modern and promising today as it was in the 1930s. And it will be up to all of us to continue building Lane Electric into a monument to energy, the energy of people working together.